Welcome to the third video for standard normal probabilities. On this video, we are going to continue with the same problem we were working on previously. However, we're only going to cover parts B, C, and D because A was completed in part two. So let's carry on. Let's go on to the next problem. So B is asking for the proportion of students who were admitted with a score between 860 and 1030. Let's see what that looks like on a diagram. This is what the original just normally distributed data diagram would look like. 860 is right here. 1030 is right here between 10. 20 and 1040 and this shaded area would represent the proportion of students that scored between those two scores. Let's take a look at how that would translate to a standard normal curve. And on a standard normal curve this is what it would look like. We would want to know the area in between this value and this value, and I'll show you how to get the, to those two values. Let's go to the spreadsheet. For this problem, the mean and standard deviation are the same. I'm using the same problem, and I'm just asking you different pieces of information off of that original problem. Keep in mind that on any problem, you would have to update your mean and standard deviation, and that would have to be given to you in the problem in order for you to do the problem. So this one, or problem B, asks for scores between 860 and 1030. A score of 860 translates to a Z value of negative 1.66667. An X value of 1030 translates to a Z value of negative 0.25. Let's see how things go. All right, so this Z value all of the area to the left or the proportion of students that fall to the left of this Z value is 0.4779 and area to the left of this Z value is 0.40129. Now in order to get the area between these two Z values or the proportion of students that scored between an 860 and a 1030, what we do is we subtract these areas just like we did before. Now normally I would just leave this on the spreadsheet but I took it away just to re-emphasize exactly what I'm doing. I start by typing equals Click on the larger value minus the smaller value and press enter. And there we have it. We have uh, an area in between those two of roughly 0.3535. Let's see what all of this looks like on a diagram. On the diagram, the 1030 SAT score corresponded with a Z value of exactly negative 0.25. And the area to the left, all the way into the tail, of a Z value of negative 0.25 is 0 0.40129. Then the other z value corresponded to an area of approximately 0 0.0478 into the tail. Now if I subtract this area right here, 
in other words, the 0 0.0478 from the entire area to the left of this blue, or, or the entire area that was originally in blue, I would have 0 0.4013 minus 0 0.0478, which equals approximately 0.3535. Let's see what that looks like. And there we have it, the area in between these two Z values, which came from my original X values of 860 and 1030 with a mean of 1060 and a standard deviation of 120. We now know that the proportion of students that fell in this area is 0.3535, and that's what that proportion would look like. Let's go to part C. Part C wants to know the proportion of students who were admitted with a score that fell below 830. Notice there are not two x values here. There's only one x value, and that one x value is this 830 right over here. Let's see what this looks like on a normal curve. On the original Gaussian curve with a mean of 1060 and a standard deviation of 120, and we want to know the area to the left of 830, meaning all the students who were admitted that fell below a score of 830. Let's go to the spreadsheet to see how that translates to z-values and areas. We want to find out the proportion of students whose scores were below 830. So I'm going to type in 830. Just press enter. Now there's no x2 value in a case like this. An 830 corresponds to a z value of negative 1.916667. And the area to the left of that is 0 0.02764, etc. Now that's basically it we don't really have to go any further than that because this means the area to the left or those that scored below the z value which came from an x value of 830 when the mean was 1060 and the standard deviation was 120. So if I were to answer this question right now, my answer would just be 0 0.0276. Keep in mind, I could ask that as a percent, so that would be 2.76%, or I could also ask that in a different way. For example, I could ask, if a student is randomly selected, what is the probability that that student scored below an 830? And no matter what, your answer would be the same. It would be 0 0.0276. Let's take a look at the last part of this. Part D wants to know the proportion of students who were admitted with a score that fell above an 1100. Now this is just slightly more difficult than when we say below. You just have to remember a few things. Let's go to the Gaussian curve that represents this. Here we are at the Gaussian curve that represents problem part D. Those that have a score that fell above 1100. Two most important things you need to remember is that on the standard normal curve, the entire area underneath is one. Why? Quite simply because it's a probability distribution. And in a probability distribution, if it were discrete, the sum of all probabilities would be one. Well, this is a continuous distribution, which we think of more in terms of area. And 
That means the entire area under this curve is 1. Now once we know that, the rest should be easy. But we also have to keep in mind that whenever we get an area for something, for any designated x value or z value, we are always finding the area to the left. So, let's go to spreadsheet mode and I will explain this in the two different ways. At one, just crunching the numbers, and two, with the diagram. Now, keep in mind, there's only one x value for this problem and that x value is 1100. That 1100 x value corresponds to a z value of 0 0.333 repeating. And the area to the left of that is 0 0.6305 or 0 0.6306. Let's just take a look back at the diagram and then we'll come back to the spreadsheet and I'll explain this in better detail. So according to the spreadsheet, the Z value with an X value of 1100 was positive 0.3333 repeating and that is represented by this like magenta line right here and the area to the left of that from the spreadsheet was 0.6306. We know that the entire area under the standard normal curve is one. Since we know the entire area under the standard normal curve with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. The entire area under that curve is one. I know that if I subtract this reddish area right here from one, I'll be left with only the area towards the right tail. In other words, area to the right of Z1 would equal one minus the area to the left of Z1. Or in this particular case, one minus 0 0.6305866 ends up being 0 0.3694. Now let's see what happens when I physically subtract this reddish or pinkish color, magenta. We'll go with magenta. And there you have it. We are left only with 0.3694 as the area to the right of the Z value of 0 0.333, which in this case corresponds to an SAT score of 1100. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and I'll just show you how to do that on the spreadsheet. On the spreadsheet, we simply do this. We only had one X value, that was 1100. That corresponded to a Z value of positive 0.3333 repeating, which corresponded to an area to the left of 0.6306. Well, over here, if you see, I already have this on the spreadsheet area to the right, I'm going to just retype what I already have. That equals one minus the area to the left. And that gives me that 0.3694 number. So it's that simple. When you only have one X value, which corresponds to one Z value, you could ignore this whole X2 and area between stuff. Just work with this top line right here. Okay, we're done with the standard normal conversions.